I want to thank Melissa for uh, leaving me two minutes. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Han. Oh, you're loving it, don't I know, I know. I hope uh, you guys don't mind. I don't like to stand still. I get a little, you know, I get a little nervous talking to everybody, so I gotta pace back and forth. So I hope it doesn't bother anybody. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am Mitch Markowitz, and my favorite TV show is Hardcore Porn. <laughs> I know, I know, that was for you. That's okay, thank you. I am a... I know, I like it too. I am a, a husband, a father, and a sensi man. For you guys to understand where I am right now, I just need to tell you a little bit of where I was. So bear with me, I'm gonna try to go quick. I, I'm really not a good speaker, so if I get off on a tangent, just let me know. Um, see, I already lost my train of thought. <laughs> In April of 2011, oh, I gotta tell you a little bit just a story. That's, that's how we're gonna get to where I'm at. In April 2011, Jess and I went to a friend of mine's retirement after 24 years in the military, we finally retired. Um, it was at Miss Henry Johnson's house. And now Jenny's <laughs> We knew nobody at this retirement party except for my friend Steve, who was the one who was retiring. Jess was all dressed up. I mean, okay. I mean everybody knows what Jess looks like. I mean, she's all dressed up. Walking up to the house, she's wearing these four inch heels and Camry's yard is just, I mean, her driveway was gravel. So she's looking at me going, I am gonna kill you for making me dress up and come to this party because I'm gonna break my neck. <laughs> so anyway, we're sitting there eating. Uh, we sit down next to this, this young lady and I look over and she's wearing Sensi t-shirt that says, I just had a... Practice safe sense. Practice safe sense. <laughs> practice safe sense. Practice safe sense, you know. So I look at her and I go, oh my God, look at that. Just is like, what? Because we have Sensi in the house from uh, a friend of ours, well, former friend of ours. That, uh, <laughs> so we knew what it was all about. So she's like, oh my God. So her and Camry start to talk, right? Two hours later... They come back. Just comes back, she's all fired up. She's like, this is great. I'm like, what's great? She's like, I am signing up, I'm joining. I looked at her, I said, you are, huh? <laughs> she goes, yeah. I said, okay. I said, you don't wanna talk about it? She's like, no. I said, because we've talked about other, uh, you know, marketing companies that we talked about her, you know, joining. Because she said she was never gonna work for anybody again in her life, right? So, I was like, okay. I said, but if you're going to do this, you're actually going to do this. I said, because we're not going to stick the money out for you to just sit back and say, hey, I'm a sensi consultant. That's nice. You know. So we go home that night. The next morning I wake up. <laughs> She's already been up for an hour. <laughs> She's signed up. She's on the phone with Camry. I come out. She's like, I signed up. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, okay. We're going to see where this one's going to go. So... The next step was her talking to Camry for like 30 minutes a day for like the next, I don't know, two weeks. So I go to work. I come back. I'm a, I was in the Air Force at the time. I go to work. I come back. She's like, all right, I got all this set up. She's like, I'm going to do a, my launch party. I'm going to go knock on people's doors. I'm going to get as many people here as I can. And she did. But then I dropped the bomb on her. Babe, I'm going away for six weeks to Alaska. She went, oh, because she scheduled her launch party the time I was gone. And instead of her going, oh, my God, what am I going to do? She was like, okay, we're going to make this work. So she packs up me a bag with cards, samples, catalogs. <laughs> and she's like, you know everybody in Alaska because they were all my friends from Las Vegas, that PCS to Alaska. And she was like, you know everybody in Alaska, so you are taking this stuff with you. And you're going to try to. You're going to introduce them to them, and you're going to try to sell them. I was like, all right, so as a good husband, 
because I love my wife. That's what I did. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm going to support her with whatever she's going to do, and if this is what she's going to do as a husband, I'm going to do that. So she has her launch party, and up in, up in Alaska, and I'm talking to one of my friends, and he finally says, hey, he's like, what is that? I'm like, so we get on the website, he's like, I'm showing him what's everything, and I'm calling her back, and I'm like, hey, this guy wants to order, but I ain't got a clue what I'm doing. She's like, all right, so she gets on the phone with him, and he makes an order, and you know, I felt a little proud. You know, I supported my wife. You know, I got a sale. Huh? <laughs> you know. Who's your daddy now? <laughs> so, so I, I move on. You know, I mean, talk to a couple other guys. It turns out one of the other guys in the shop, his wife sells sensi too. So I was like, oh, all right. So it kind of doing a lot. So I come home from this uh, six week T Y, and uh, where, this is when we were in New Mexico, and our roles in the house didn't really change much because, you know. I always did the cooking, or else I don't think anybody would eat at home. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, our roles didn't change, honestly. We always did everything 50-50. We, we never did anything like, she was 100% this, and I was 100% that, except for the cooking. Uh, so, the, the things that started to change were uh, me giving, you know, instead of splitting, giving the kids baths, I was doing it all. It turned out to me, you know, I'm giving the kids the baths. You know, I'm making sure the kids are are uh, getting dressed because she's working. You know, and I'm not going to take that away from her. She's working, and as a husband and a father, I'm not going to let my kids run around naked. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to make sure they eat, and I'm going to support her in whatever she's doing. So, so I did. So then, her team started to grow, and it started to grow fast. So she started having meetings at the house. I mean, she was on track for director before she was a director. I mean, she was having meetings as a superstar consultant. So we have all these people in the house that she's, that she's sponsored, and they start bringing this, you know, their husbands over, and she's like, you got to talk to them about you know, the business, and you got to keep, you know, you got to make sure the kids aren't running here yelling and screaming. And, you know, I'm like, all right, you know, as a husband, I'm going to stay in there and I'm going to support you. And as a father, I sure as heck ain't going to let the kids go run through because I'm going to knock them out. <laughs> 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 so we start talking, the guys start talking, and, and, you know, you get the questions of like, oh, what do you think of the business? You know, I'm, I'm real weary about this. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking to him saying, you know what, you, you got to give it a chance. I mean, you love your wife? Yeah, I love your wife. So as a husband, support your wife, whatever she's going to do. I mean, you're in the military, you go away for six, eight weeks, two months, six months at a time. I said, she's there for you to support her, so support her. She's there to support you, so support her and what, what she's doing. I mean, even if it is just, you know, honey, great job, you know. Uh, but a lot of guys don't look at it like that. You know? So we had to come back to Las Vegas in January, did I forget anything? 2012. <laughs> unfortunately, the reason why, well, we were, I was getting ready to retire anyway, and we were going to stay in New Mexico, but unfortunately, the reason why we moved back to Las Vegas, unfortunately, was because my father passed away. So I'm glad I didn't have to follow, follow Kelly, because, <laughs> you know, me being a tough guy that I am, I don't like to cry for anybody, especially all you ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, Tears make you a real yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we moved back to Las Vegas, and Becca calls Jess and says, Hey, I'm going to a seminar. I want you to come with me. So she goes, and after, afterwards we went to dinner. She was like, You got to meet me. So I brought the kids, and you know, we went to dinner. And I got a chance to sit down and talk with Terry. Now, everybody knows when you talk to Terry. He's got a lot to say. He's very knowledgeable. But I was curious on exactly what he was telling me their path on things that they've done when they joined the company. And me, I'm just like, okay, I'm listening, you know. But I didn't get it. You know, I'm like, okay, we're selling candles. All right, this safe for kids. My dog could eat it and not grow up and get sick. No, I'm okay with that. So. Then Jess gets the chance to speak at retreat last year. No, I'm sorry. Let me let me go back. Let me let me rewind a little bit. 
Uh, spring sprint. So I got to meet Becca, Kelly, Edgar, everybody, Sandy Lucky. Uh, we go to spring sprint, and you know, Becca shows up in California, spring sprint. Everybody's like, oh my god, this Becca Levi. And I'm like, yeah. And she comes over, she gives me a big hug, and they're like, oh my god, you know Becca? Like, rock star. Like, I mean, rock star. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Oh my god. And the yelling and screaming at spring spring, everybody's excited. Mitch is standing there supporting Jess like a good husband. Still don't get it. You know? So, Becca asked Jess to speak at retreat last year, and we came. Becca invited me. Thank, thank you guys again. And uh, now she's speaking. I come here to support her again as a husband. Still don't get it. <laughs> so we go to convention in July, and I mean, who's who went to convention last year? Everybody. Yes. I mean, it was crazy, right? It was exciting. Everybody got Grace Adele introduced to him. Uh, we got more of a lot of stuff, right? I mean, heard some stories. We cried. We shared. Yeah, Mitch, you can get it. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I mean, I was there because I support my wife as a husband. And of course, you know, I watch my kids when she's running around as, as the father that I am. So, <laughs> still, yeah, went to Puka Takana. That was great. <laughs> Jess on that trip, not me. Had nothing to do with it. Um, we go back to, we, you know, we start to go further on you know, with the business and everything's going on. And, you know, a couple of weeks after, after the convention, we sit down and we have the talk. Does anybody know what the talk is? You know what the talk is? The talk is, we really need to talk about things. And I'm like, okay. What things do we need to talk about? Well, I'm growing, the business is growing, but I don't feel you're growing with me. So, very emotional time. She's very emotional, you know, so, whether it's, whatever it is. But. So we sat down and we had the talk. And I'm like, okay. She's like, I need you to do this. I need you to listen to calls. I need you to get more involved. I need you to start watching some of these webinars, which, unfortunately, I still haven't done that. But I, I, I just need you to get more involved. And I'm like, well, oh, what do I need to get more involved? I'm sorry, I gotta rewind one second back to retreat last year. I'm sorry, I got a chance to sit down with Ken O'Dell, which was just amazing. And um, I asked him what my role was, and he was like, you're doing it. So I went from there, and now we can fast forward, I'm sorry. So we, uh, I said, okay, what do, I need? what do you want me to do? You know, she's like, and she, she rattled off that list of things that she wanted me to do. So I sat down. And I started to listen to a call here and there, you know. I mean, the kids are running around the house. Um, I got my headset in, you know, my phone in my pocket. I'm doing dishes, you know. I'm yelling at them to stop jumping off the couch because you're going to break an arm, you know. I mean, our kids are just out of control, you know. I mean, the house is just, I'm trying to straighten up. And she's like, did you listen? I'm like, yeah, I listened. She's like, ah, good. So, you know. She tried to get me more involved in the business. She, after after uh, convention, she put my name on our business card, you know, to, to try to get me more involved, you know, to try to get me to listen to more more uh, calls. So then, uh, about a couple months went by again, and, and we had to talk again. You know what I mean? <laughs> She's like. We really need to, because at that point, I mean, she's all the way up there, and I'm all the way back here. You know what I mean? And I don't want her to get away from me. So we, I started to listen to some more calls, and I started to listen to the Saturday calls, and I started to listen to the Monday night calls that, that she does with the team and everything like that. And then January came around. This is December, right? And then January came around, and uh, she got sick. I, I mean, it wasn't like deathly sick. It was just, you know, she had strep. She was losing her voice. I mean, anybody who talked to her on the phone knows. I mean, we talked about this yesterday, but I'm going to go over it again real quick. And um, we had a party. 
And it was the only party that we had in January. And January is really slow for us. So she was going to cancel it, and it was the last week of January. I'm like, oh, if you cancel it, we're going to be, you know, it's not going to help us because it's the last week. So she goes, I said, I'll do it. She's like, gosh. Right. And, and, you know, she gave me a look of like, yeah, right, you're going to do this. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. She goes, all right. So she's freaking out, not knowing what to do. She's like, make sure you have this, make sure you have that. I'm like, babe, don't worry about it. I said, I'll be fine. She gets on a call, she, she hits Facebook up, she, Carrie Bowens hits her back and says, you know what, we're going to sit down, we're making up a plan since you're so worried about it, and we're going to make sure that he does his party and it's going to be good. So they did, and I appreciate that. Thank you again. And, uh, but like I said yesterday, thank God only one person showed up to this party. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, I know. Right, only one person showed up to this party, and she was two hours late. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I got the chance to sit and talk with the hosts, and I got to set up my display, and it, it kind of got me feeling comfortable and everything like that. So when you know this person did show up, I got to sit there. It was like an open house version, so it was nice. And uh, I'm answering questions. I'm taking her order and. You know, and just before I left, she goes, if you book a party, she goes, I am going to laugh my butt off. <laughs> so that was a challenge to me. I was like, well, I ain't going to let that one go. I like challenges, you know. So I booked the party. So we're sitting down trying to figure out when I'm going to do this party, right? And the girl's like, well, what about March 9th? And I went, oh, February 9th. I'm sorry. And I went, all right. So I called Jess. I'm like, Jess. Check your book. See, February 9th is open. She's like, yeah, no. I said, why not? She's like, I'm going to be in New Mexico speaking at Spring Spring. I'm like, oh, man. The girl looks at me and goes, you can do the party. And I went, I went yeah, I can. <laughs> do that party. So, so Jess goes out to Spring Spring. She's all worried. She's like, all right, you got the plan. You got, you know, carry work. I'm like, yeah, I got the plan. So I took my 12-year-old daughter, which is like seven feet tall. <laughs> I took my 12-year-old daughter with me. I dropped my other two kids off at my brother-in-law's house. And uh, we went off to this party. And it was an open house version. I mean, it was like, I'm telling you, it was probably like 18, 12, between 12 and 15 people there. And I was like, all right. So I set up. My daughter's helping me. Everybody's eating and talking. And, coming up and asking questions. And, and I look over and I said, and I, and I see my 12-year-old daughter sitting there answering questions. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm just like, wow. So then I'm, at, I'm taking orders. I'm writing up orders. And she's answering questions. I'm answering questions. And I got this feeling of just like, I got it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not just about it's not just about money. It's not just about... I, I saw the passion that Jess had. I saw the passion that everybody else feels. I mean, it was just... It, it, it was amazing, honestly. It was like... Everybody was just asking questions, all happy, you know? And then the order comes in, just like, well, this is your order, so you need to pack up. <laughs> <laughs> so I packed it up. And then I had to deliver it. I got three minutes? All right, almost done. So th then, I, you know, I packed it up, and I had to deliver it. But the thing is, I, I, fi I finally saw what everybody gets so excited about. It's, n it's not about the money. It's not about, you know, anything. Like, it's, it's the feelings of, of seeing people happy with what you're doing and receiving what you're giving, you know? Um, it, it, the way it affected me a lot, it's not only that our relationship actually, since I'm not only back here anymore, and Callie's telling me I better hurry up. I'm, I'm creeping up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I'm trying to be right here. I'm trying to be. Are you got the picture? Callie, you got the picture? Oh, yeah. I apologize. That's okay. You know, I'm. But, uh. <laughs> it, it, it changed my mind in a lot of things because I applied for NHP Nevada Highway Patrol. And, uh. 
I was in the process of, and this, is a dream, this was a dream of mine since I was a kid, to become a cop. And I was on my way to becoming a cop. And, and, and this is where we are right now. You know? <laughs> and I was on my way to becoming a cop. Uh, I took the test. I'm into, I was into background. I mean, they had my background package. They called me up, say, hey, I need to sit down and talk to you about, how, about your background. And I, looked, I, called, I talked to them, and I said, you know what? Like what? I said, I'm withdrawing my application. They're like, what? I said, yeah, I don't, I, you know what? I changed my mind. Circumstances in my life, in my wife's life, my family's life have changed. So, <laughs> I'm not looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, circumstances for us have changed, and we're going to take this journey. She's not taking it by herself anymore. We're going to take it together. <laughs> so, that is was a big, big impact in my life, in our lives, because she never, ever thought I would change my mind to become a cop. So, this helps me say that I am a husband, a father, and a sensitive man. Thank you. <laughs>